What's up everyone? Thank you for trucking with G. I'm Gilbert. This video is going to be about Convoy canceling all their loads. What is going on? Man. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time I drop a new video. And if you want to support the channel, go ahead and check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Alright everyone, we're going to go ahead and react to Freight Waves on what the truck and they're having a discussion about what's going on with convoy all right let's start it off excited to be here a lot going on man talking about winter is coming and uh, for some folks uh, coming a little bit earlier than others uh, always a pleasure here uh, in good company as well with our uh, what is his name again a weather face right weather here that's Bubba Hewitt. actually i'm gonna get this show in just a second i'm just waiting for the tweet to pop up guys in the back just let me know when that gets up there we got some developing news we're about to go on air and talk about something completely different the war room the news war room walked in here we said we got some breaking news from you multiple reports have come into freight waves late last night and today saying that convoy has canceled all of their loads and sent their staff home we're not clear entirely on uh, if this is a bankruptcy or that's crazy they canceled all their loads and sent all of their staff home why tell me what you think in the comments below let me know what you think why did they send all their staff home are they gonna go bankrupt they say that they're going to restructure the company. Did they sell the company? Are they just starting up a whole brand new company, brand new LLC or S Corp? What do you think? If they've been sold, if it's some sort of acquisition, we know that there had been talks like that. It's a developing story. We're going to have more information. The whole story will be up on FreightWaves.com pretty soon. And our own CEO and founder, Craig Fuller, is going to help break down this whole brokerage situation that is going on on this very show on Friday, but what do you make of Convoy, this news that we just got? Well, it really just depends. Craig had recently did a tweet talking about challenges to brokerages. I talked about from being a brokerage, there's a fear with the, the soft market, your lanes are underwater. So, uh, you know, looking at this right now, the big question is, is this gonna be an isolated event or the freight equivalent of a Lehman Brothers moment? There is a lot of concerns for brokerages right now, especially their business model. When times get soft and your margins are compressing, how much cash flow do you have to make it? So a lot to unpack here. A lot to unpack, a lot has happened too. By the way, really quick too, the driver shortage number has been revised. This is also breaking news. Uh, this is how it started, how it's going. You guys got that image? Yeah, here it is. So about a month ago, Craig. Driver shortage, that, that's funny. If anything, the only driver shortage that, that there is, is just, it's hard to retain drivers. It's hard to keep drivers because they're always looking for the next big thing, the next highest paying job that they could get with their experience. But anyways, yeah, I think that driver shortage crap, it's a bunch of bull. Miller put out an article talking about the driver shortage, dispelling, debunking the driver shortage myth, especially in this market where we're having yellow bankruptcies, convoy maybe being gone, all these companies, all these drivers out there in the market. Uh, they revised their numbers. They said Freightways gets it wrong on the driver shortage on September 6th, and then on Monday, I guess Bob Pisello is admitting uh, the ATA got it wrong too. They revised it. It's down to 60,000. That's where it was in 2019, Thomas. We've done it. We have solved the driver shortage. We have saved apparently 20,000 uh, driver related jobs. But when you're looking at these data sets, always be a little concerned because it's a very large fuzzy number. Uh, for, for lobbying purposes, it's great if you want to get congressional leaders or somebody to try and get you funding. But for actual working people inside operations, uh, you know, it's very fungible. Drivers, if there was an ever new shortage, we would see that in rate data. Thomas, we are going to have to ask you to step off for uh, a minute here. The man of the hour, Craig Fuller, has just stopped by. His story is so big, it's brought him down to the studio. Let's uh, let's talk to Craig here. Because, Craig, you started this day. I mean, it's almost ominous in hindsight. You put a tweet out talking about what was going on with brokerages and some of the challenges that we're seeing in the industry. And then all these reports are coming in about Convoy now. 
Yeah, I, you know, a story that I've actually been working on for some time didn't have enough uh, sort of smoke around the story, but the idea is that a lot of freight brokers are struggling. You know, I've heard predictions as many as 25% of the freight brokerage market is at risk. Uh, and really, freight brokers, man, I know everybody in the trucking industry, as far as like owner ops are concerned, you know, the, the whole theory or the whole belief is that freight brokers are taking off the top of, you know, of the rates that they pay us owner operators to do the loads. You know what I'm saying? Like some people think like, ah, oh, the breakers, I mean, the brokers are taking 50% off the top or 60% off the top, or they're only giving the owner operator like 20% of the load, which I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know any freight brokers myself. Like I don't know anybody personally. All I know is the freight brokers that I deal with, you know, professionally and I have no idea like how much they're actually getting paid for the loads that I'm doing. So it's all up in the air. My theory uh, right now with the freight recession, like I feel like honestly, they're probably struggling just as much as us owner operators, but just on a different type of level because you know what I mean? They're, the freight demand is down. All the way around, there's no there's no way around it. The freight is down, uh, inflation is high, price of fuel is high, um, everything going on in the, in the economy, it's just all bad. So I think every industry in the country is just suffering right now, but the freight and trucking industry has it the worst. And uh, as far as brokers are concerned, I feel like they're just undercutting each other, you know, with the customer, like for example, Walmart, they're talking about, oh, I'll do your load for 2000. And then another broker, broker comes in, oh, I'll do it for 1500. And then another broker comes in, oh, I'll do it for a thousand. And another broker comes in, oh, I'll do it for 500. And then the 500 gets it. And then they give it to an owner operator at like 250 or 350. I don't have any idea, but I could assume that's what's going on with the freight brokers. They're just battling each other and they keep cutting each other's legs out from under them. But anyways, that's what I think. I'll dive into it in a bit, but um, this story is about Convoy uh, specifically. We have a statement here that Convoy has apparently sent out to customers. It says, today we are taking several necessary steps to prepare Convoy's transition for a transition that we will have more details on the next 48 hours. We will have more to share in the next 48 hours. We can't not answer any questions at this time. As such, all shipments have been canceled from our marketplace. You can choose to work with the carriers that were booked on canceled shipments directly. If you need any carrier contact information, you can reach out to support at convoy.com. What we've been told from multiple sources. Wow. All shipments have been canceled from their marketplace. That is mind blowing. Like that, that is huge. That's detrimental. And they're trying to, you know, make it seem like they're restructuring the company, but really they either sold the company and they're getting out while they're still ahead to go and start a whole nother business or something. And everybody that's working for the company and everybody that's doing their loads or, you know, they're, they're stuck doing their loads and, you know, the loads got canceled. It's like, now what do they do? They're just left without a job? Oh, man. This is that convoy sent everyone home and they cleared out their boards and they're no longer accepting new shipments uh, and basically shuttering operations. And I, I have to tell you that this story um, I has been blowing up for the next couple of hours. I was actually over at the courthouse for a rezoning application. My phone started blowing up. I came over to the studio. Uh, it, you know, it, it's it's a really sad day for the folks at Convoy that I know really 
you know, it, it is a sad day. I mean, Dan and his team are a, a great team over there. At news like this, it, it has to be, you know, driving a lot of participants in the market insane this morning, right? They've just, they've just been through all the yellow struggles. When we talk about all the loads being canceled, how many, like, loads would that be? You know, I was told from sources that are much more familiar with the inside metrics of Convoy is they were, it got as high as about 800 million revenue. And you figure $2,000 uh, per transaction um, and just think about what that represents in terms of size. We're talking, you know, 5,000 loads, 10,000 loads a day, uh, something of that sort of scale. Uh, the issue... five to 10,000 loads a day at $2,000 per load per transaction is what he just said. That's insane is that you know it went from 800 million to 500 million but i think we have to sort of understand and unpack why is this happening you know convoy has raised 900 million dollars why are we in a situation where a company that raised that much money would suddenly shut down and i think what you have to understand is that a lot of the funding mechanisms go beyond venture capital so vcs uh funds called speculative uh, businesses and convoy in the very early days and really throughout its history was able to show really high growth really smart team around it and uh, as it, it was showing high growth numbers it got a lot of investors excited about the opportunity to disrupt the trucking industry but what's happened over the last 18 months is this freight recession has really taken a toll and it's taken a toll in uh in the early part of it was volume losses the second part of the cycle is really that margin compression and one thing that happened with a lot of these high growth brokers and convoy would be classified as a high growth broker is they finance the receivables through what we call asset based lines of credit, sort of like factoring. It's a bit more of a, a mature product, product, so truckers will be familiar with factoring. Asset based lines of credit are typically with larger banks and institutions, but they own the receivables and they have covenants in there, which is no different than if you run a business, you have a debt covenant. And that covenant is basically a way for the bank to manage risk. And so that if you break or violate a covenant, then what happens is the bank is ultimately um, can can ultimately freeze your line of credit. And that, well, I have no information about whether that has specifically taken place here. We know in the brokerage industry is that that would make sense if that's what's going on. They might have just got boom, just cut off by that bank or their banks. At, uh, a lot of brokers who had asset based lines of credit. Uh, are struggling or in violation of those covenants, which means these banks can actually seize those businesses at any moment in time. Is, was there a lot of interest around Convoy's business? I know they were looking at potentially some strategic acquisitions. Maybe that's happened here. Again, like we said at the top, we're still waiting for some clarity, but what do you, what do you think's shaking out here? Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that we've heard of the last couple of, really the last couple of months, this has been uh, budding up, but certainly in the last couple of weeks, is that uh, Convoy had packaged up its business to sell. I think they had sort of realized that uh, this freight winter, this freight recession was gonna go a lot longer than any of us expected. Uh, and it's continued to go a, a lot longer than any of us have as expected. And so they realized that the best outcome for them was to take the business and sell it. And I, look, as a founder of a venture back company like Freightways, it's a really hard thing to do, especially when you're selling in a, what we call a down round or in a, in a sort of distressed situation, which is mean I'm taking this business that at one point on paper was worth a lot of money, and now I'm having to basically sell it just to keep it alive. And I think what we've heard is that Convoy has went out and shopped the business. Uh, there was four final bidders in the bidding process. Uh, names that we were told, uh, sources have suggested that C.H. Robinson was one of those bidders. Walmart was one of those bidders. Um, Amazon was one of those bidders. And I wouldn't be surprised if Walmart or Amazon took over Convoy's platform. Maersk was one of those bidders. And so you have four major companies that certainly have the balance sheet to do that. Sage Robinson is actually, oddly enough, the smallest of those companies uh, that would potentially bidding on it. Um, Walmart's, uh, you know, Walmart wants to be bigger uh, play in freight. We've heard that they've hired folks to build a freight brokerage in-house at Walmart. Uh, they've certainly declined uh, to talk about that on record uh, and refused to answer questions. But those rumors have been out there. Those discussions have been out there for some time. Amazon is clearly a major participant in the market. And one of the interesting things about Convoy is 
Dan Lewis, uh, the founder, and Grant both worked at Amazon, were Amazon executives when they came up with the business model and raised some of their first money came from uh, Jeff Bezos. And so Bezos, uh, Bezos' venture fund was actually a backer. There's always been these rumors or expectations that at some point Amazon would acquire Convoy because of Bezos' backing. Obviously, that doesn't appear to be the case. Um, we have reason to believe that Amazon is not acquiring uh, Convoy, even in a distress situation. Uh, but we we certainly don't know. They're all kind of compelling. All those names you listed are every kind one of, of them. Like I, what, I've talked to people about Convoy's business model over the last couple of days. This this story about the asset based lines of credit isn't a Convoy story specifically. This is a story I've heard for the last couple of months. Um, but as I learned last year, if you go too early uh, with the story before the market sort of develops and you're too out there on a limb, you, you sort of expose. So I've sort of held off on reporting that, waiting for more information, but a lot of folks have told me that's the situation. Um, but one of the things that I, I've also heard about Convoy, and we certainly have seen it, is that Convoy had great technology, really smart team, like really solid engineering team. Very. Th that is true. Besides their rates being so low, I mean, Convoy, let's face it, they've always had the, the crappiest rates. They've always had cheaper rates than any other load board or broker that's in the industry. They pay dirt cheap for their freight. And you could bid on loads and, you know, I've, I've done maybe like four or five loads in the three years that I've been an operator. And... I only did those loads because I was able to get the quote that I that I bid the load at. But they are a crappy broker when it comes to rates, when it comes to paying for these loads. The owner operators really just, they get shafted, no loop. And uh, I feel really bad for anybody that is surviving off of convoys loads like exclusively which i doubt you know i really don't think that anybody's running convoy loads only i'm pretty sure they're just dibbling and dabbling you know with other brokers and just whatever high, highest load paying jobs that they could find but i do want to say when it comes to their platform and their technology convoy is like amongst the top when it comes to like user interface and how easy it is to book loads and deliver loads and pick up loads it is super easy and super simple on that app probably as good as the amazon app the amazon relay app which i don't have them as a owner operator myself but when i was leased on to another company that i started my owner operator journey I was doing Amazon loads through that company and Amazon, yeah, it is it is really nice. They don't have the highest paying loads unless it's like peak season, then their loads do pay pretty good. But um, as far as user interface, those two apps are probably the best apps out of all the, the load broker apps to be able to book loads and pick up and deliver. Thoughtful team and um unfortunately it, it was just on the wrong side of the market like the market you know the, the freight gods have not been kind to freight brokers and the high growth freight brokers this year and it hasn't been kind to anybody in trucking and look every business including ours is exposed to this market and it just means i think you know brokerage winter is coming if it's actually it's here we're right in the middle of it i mean that's what you tweeted this morning you said that you're hearing that a ton of midside not Broker winter is coming. Now that's real right there. I don't know if you ever watch Game of Thrones, man, but winter is coming. When that happened in the show, when they talked about winter is coming, it was deep. Like it meant that it was about to go down. They were about to go to war. It was about to be like apocalyptic, basically. But anyways, yeah. Winter's coming.
just digital freight brokerage like Convoy, a ton of mid-sized brokerages are in financial trouble. That's what we're hearing. You know, someone had estimated, and I think this is an exaggeration, but I've heard as much as 25% of freight brokers in that mid-market level are potentially exposed. I think that's, again, I think that's a big stretch, but even if it's 5% of that number, we're talking about some real sizable freight brokers, which have an enormous amount of exposure to the market. And it, remember, it's because they finance their businesses and they use receivables, accounts receivable, to finance the growth of their business to enable them to grow their business uh, aggressively in terms of staff and resources. And what happens is when the market turned over and your average load went from say $3,000 uh, a load to $1,500, two things happened. One is uh, you just that completely slowed down the amount of capital that were available to you because that line of credit is directly related to the size of your portfolio. And then the second thing that happened is that you're in violation of what we call covenants, which are those uh, rules that the banks put on you to say, hey, you must do this and your company has to have this kind of element. If it doesn't and violates one of these rules, we have the right to foreclose on the business. I don't know that the banks are foreclosed. I'm not suggesting that's the case, but we do know that Convoy has been in discussions to find uh, potential exit partners. <sighs> You're out. Oh man. So their, their financing is based on accounts receivables, meaning depending on their portfolio, the customers that they have, the clients that they have, then the more financing that they could get to grow their company. Well, of course now the volume's down. Everybody's suffering, every single business. It don't matter if you're a big, huge behemoth or all the way down to a single truck owner operator everybody's struggling and you know what they probably lost accounts they lost customers they got outbid and that's something that's saying something because convoy they got to be the cheapest broker out there or at least one of the cheapest broker out there and for them to lose accounts man that's how you know it's bad Optimism um, is kind of out the window too. I, I know freight waves is a little bit more. That was your other tweet today. Was that uh, Q4 recovery just doesn't look like it's happening? In fact, we were just talking on our last show that you were saying recovery isn't going to happen for like 74, 78 months. You know, it's a really. Weeks, I'm sorry, months like, would be a long time. You know what's time. crazy, Dooner, is it was last March was the start of the freight recession, and it, and you know you typically think these things through the course of months. Um, three-year cycle is sort of the rule of thumb that we've always used. But one of the things that we all expect, that I certainly was early on this, if you remember the bloodbath conversation, the great purge, we all believed that the capacity was gonna leave the exit much, uh, leave the industry much faster and the market would recover much faster. I am not alone in that, that view, and a lot of executives that I have an enormous amount of respect for that have been in this industry for decades uh, have also believed that was the case. And what I think we've all learned is that this cycle is very different. The freight recession, this freight recession, is different than any freight recession we've ever had. And I've been asking myself for the last couple of months. You could say that again. Why have we not seen, really for the last year, why have we not seen a big reset in capacity? If you have really challenging conditions, normally you would expect the owner-operator market and the really small carriers to exit. And we have not seen a level of purge to actually get the market back in balance. And the question is why? We believe that the reason is that the freight brokerage has been a massive growth industry, went from a cottage industry. You know, freight brokers weren't actually legal. You could not legally broker freight until 1980. And so this is a recent. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and end it right there. Um, but yeah, big news of the day, uh, convoy canceling all their loads. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think is really going on? Honestly, in my opinion, I feel like they're getting out while they're ahead, seeing where the, the trucking industry is going. It's just a downward spiral, and it's just gonna keep getting worse. Well, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. I don't know, man. It's just scary right now, and all I can think of right now is in the Bible, the scripture, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord God with all your heart. So, I'm gonna end it right there and leave you with that. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a like. Do me a favor, 
subscribe hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time i drop a new video and you want to support the channel go ahead and check out the amazon affiliate links in the description below and uh once again thank you for everybody that's all subscribed to me already and uh stay strong stay safe and i'll see you on the next one